Welcome to today's conversation. When is someone a contractor or an employee? For the Virginia Early Childhood Foundation. In today's conversation, we will learn how to classify contractors versus employees. The information contained here has been prepared by Civitas Strategies Early Start and is not intended to constitute legal tax or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies Early Start team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. The publication and distribution of this information are not intended to create, and receipt does not constitute an attorney-client or any other advisory relationship. Reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. In today's conversation, we'll go over the difference between a contractor and employee, and we'll learn how to classify your employees. Hiring somebody to help you with your childcare business can be one of the best decisions you can make. It increases your ability to serve more children, improve program quality, and be a more efficient business. However, there's a question that often comes up, is my hire a contractor or an employee? The risks are real and knowing the answer can save you a great deal of time and money. What's the issue? Employees and contractors are treated very differently under a federal and state law. Contractors are considered independent business people. They pay their own employment taxes and their employer usually has fewer legal obligations for the worker. Employees, on the other hand, come with greater costs like employment taxes and benefits. Understanding misclassification. Sometimes in the face of these additional costs, childcare owners will opt to have a person be treated as a contractor, even though they should be an employee. Sometimes this is even the preference of the worker as well. The problem is that the classification isn't solely up to the employer or worker. There are rules that determine how someone should be classified. Misclassification of a contractor can cost you a great deal of money and time. If you make a mistake, even an honest one, where you just feel you didn't know, you could be liable for 100% of the employer taxes you should have been contributing all along, a portion of the employee's contribution to payroll taxes. Yes, you read that right. The employer has to pay a portion of the taxes they would never have paid in the first place. You could be subject to criminal fines for thousands of dollars or the price of any missed benefits and other compensations such as paid time off that the worker didn't get as a contractor could be your responsibility. With risks like these, you can see why it's important that you ensure to choose the right path, which leads to the question, how do you know which one to choose? We'll take a deeper look at determining whether you have a contractor or an employee through the three essential elements that define employment, service, wages, and direction or control. The first essential element is service or type of relationship. Does the person work on a contractual basis or on short duration projects like a contractor? Does the person work for other businesses or just for you? Wages or the financial component is the second essential element. How is the person paid? For example, is the person paid every week for a set number of hours, which indicates an employee, or are they paid at a completion of a job like a contract? The third element is direction, behavioral. How much control do you have over the day-to-day -day work? For example, do you set the requirements around hours for work? What type of equipment or tools need to be used or the training needed? If yes, then this person is likely an employee. So what do you do now? We recommend childcare business owners take three actions when it comes to classifying workers as contractors. Step one. First and foremost, think through a position before you hire. Run through the IRS identified 20 factors that indicate if someone is a contractor or an employee before you make the mistake of mishiring and have the liabilities associated with it. Step two, if you think you may have one or more misclassified contractors, stop and do a full assessment by reviewing the 20 factors linked in the written guide. Seek help from a human resource or legal professional on what to do for anyone who is misclassified.
step three. When in doubt, seek counsel from a human resource or legal professional. As you know now from the possible penalties, potential misclassification is a high stakes bet and you don't want to lose. This is one of those times that it's worth the money to invest in professional advice if you have questions or want to be sure how to proceed. You can find available resources at vecf-cses.com. You can also register for free one-on-one -on -one business coaching. Coaching and resources are available in English and Spanish. You can also check out this guidance from the state of Virginia employee or independent contractor from the Virginia Employment Commission at https colon slash slash vec dot virginia dot gov slash employers slash employee dash or dash independent dash contractor.